presentation by Vittorio Ravello. He's a global innovation electric, uh, electric uh, program manager at Fiat Source, uh, Resource Center or CRF. Uh, he has a 29 years of experience and is an expert in the area of EVs, uh, EV standardization and related e-power systems. So uh, yeah, Vittorio, the floor is yours. Good morning to everybody. The uh, scope of my speech will be to focus on some side, but I feel a relevant element about the charging itself, independently the way you do, let me say, and give you some hint on the trends. I work in the research domain, so I have some view of which can be the future. And for who has to make investment, uh, clearly that's an important element to be kept into account because investment on infrastructure are huge and in general become effective if can be applied for a certain time. If they have to be refurbished any two or three years, it become a nightmare. In this slide, I put you two picture. On the left, you see a classical refueling station and on the right, a typical DC fast charging station, at least for conventional cars. And as you can see from the picture, they seem very similar. So the message for the customer is don't worry, at the end, you leave a word and you come in another word that is very close to the one you leave. That's for some extent true. The big effort we are doing also with standard and so on is try to make it as much as possible true, but there are some differences. And these differences has to be taken deeply into account in my mind. Uh, for instance, when I do refueling, I am transferring a fuel. So refuel means take a fuel from a place and put a fuel in another, like to put water from a bottle in a glass. When I do battery charge, I am not transferring electrons in the vehicle. That's a, a wrong picture of the story in the sense that electric circuit is closed, what comes in comes out. All the electrons coming in the vehicle from the plus comes out from the minus. Uh, at the same time, this passage of electrons enable another thing that is the one making the charge, that is enable chemical reaction, in particular, a reduction oxidation reaction. So it's a complete different mechanism. Again, back to the standard world in which we are today, uh, maybe we are not aware of, but when you may click on the pistol of our system making the charging, we are making pass in our hands uh, a large number of a kilowatt. In particular, we can run between lot of hundred of kilowatt hour up to uh, megawatt. So the power level we are transferring is really impressive. A clearly managed megawatt in the electric domain is not so simple. And in general, uh, the story is not so easy because if I want to make a real complete charge of the vehicle, I need longer time. All the DC fast charging solution are partial charge, maybe convenient, maybe effective, but not full. And higher is the so-called C rate. So some way the ratio between the power of I put in the battery and the energy of the battery, more uh, critical can become the behavior for the battery side. Uh, the last presentation by Arnold has been very, very useful in this direction. If you have seen, uh, the faster is the bus charging I want uh, going to the flash charging, meaning I put in a short term a lot of power on the vehicle, lower is the energy I can imagine to have in the bus, because imagine to have this at each bus stop, in principle I can imagine to have on board a very small battery. That's perfect, but from the battery side created the highest challenge, because you have the highest power with the lowest energy of the battery. Why is important charging? Because the time and efficiency of this process are largely impacting the perception. Uh, obviously, except speaking about charging motion, it is also an option, the train, tramway, and also the one presented in the last presentation. Uh, charging with vehicle not in motion means that when I'm charging the vehicle, I cannot use the vehicle for motion. And that means uh, if the time of charging is not so short, uh, a certain unavailability of the vehicle for the charging time duration. Very relevant is also the efficiency. Why is so relevant the efficiency? Because uh, efficiency impacts on what I pay. When I transfer fuel from the station to the tank or on the car, I am paying the fuel I am transferring. When I pay the charging process, I pay the energy that becomes available plus the efficiency of the charger. 
so the losses in particular, plus the losses of the battery chemical process. And these two numbers are not 100%. And so how lowest they are, how higher is the payment that the customer has to face in respect to what he is at the end taking. It's like in a comparison to have a fuel station which there is a hole in your pipe and you pay more fuel than the one that comes in your tank. At the same time, the way in which I connect the battery to the charging, in the previous presentation, you see a very comprehensive and wide way in which we are imagining of doing this, uh, has multiple effects. The first is the user experience, totally different and automatic system by a manual. The level of involvement is totally different, clearly. The electrical safety, in some cases, uh, this automatic solution, for instance, make more sure the solution, in other maybe less because I need to put my hands on my voltage system, and also the level of complexity, cost, and uh, volume dimension of the infrastructure to make it possible. Uh, what about the trends? Uh, I use this slide because I find it very useful. As you can see by the footnote, is a 216 slide coming from Porsche. So maybe some, for a research guy a lot of years ago, maybe for who looks at the infrastructure not so far time ago, five years. Five years ago, this was the picture. We were used to speak about, at least for cars, 50 kilowatt fast charging. Someone was starting to speak about 100, 140, 150. And someone was starting to open the door to higher voltage of the battery, going to voltage batteries more close to the bus one, 800. And at this point with the same current roughly reaching double digit of the figure seen before. Uh, so you see 50 to 220, four times bigger. Today, on the other end, after five years, we commonly speak about 350 kilowatt at 800 volt, so a further step in the hands. A new study, new research speaks about also for the car area, number going closer and closer to one megawatt for the reason I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, for who looks the picture in terms of perspective, wonderful, great. For who is to pay to make the infrastructure can be a killing factor. If you decide and you put in place a 50 kilowatt infrastructure, that was the advice five years ago, now realize that there's an infrastructure totally not fitting the road. And so that's very important. This big push of technology can be very useful, very nice, very promising, but also open the door to an higher complexity in selecting the right solution with 10, 15, 20 years landscape in front. At the end of the story, why the power is so much pushed up? Because at the end, energy is the product of power by time. This is physics. And at this point, as said before, higher is the energy you want to put in the vehicle, for instance, that's what is happening in the cars, higher will become the power to have the same time of charge. And anyway, further higher power if I want also in parallel to reduce the time to the few minutes uh, today uh, possible with a standard car. At this point, uh, this means charging power higher and higher. Just to give you a simple example, imagine this is for cars, uh, 60, 100 kilowatt hour typical energy on board for mid-size, big-size cars. And this is typical uh, partial 80% charging time today and what I want in the future. It means moving, putting together the lowest energy and the low and the highest time, this power level. But if I want to reach read in future, the 100 kilowatt hour in five minutes means that. So this is one charging lot can move from a factor five. And that's uh, assuming, and this is a calculation simplified and negligent the efficiency mentioned before, assuming the battery, the technology follow you because technology means uh, cables, today water cool, oil cooled to make it possible, connectors, batteries, and so on. Is uh, all the system has to support this step in advance. Good point already mentioned at the beginning by ARM is that a good, very important point of electrical domain is that I can change a paradigm. Instead to charge only at the charging station, like I do today with fuel, I can imagine multiple charging places. 
and at least for Vicon, maybe not the buses, but for the more private that are a lot of the time parked, open the door to large time to make charging also at a lower power, longer time with a higher efficiency and a lower environmental, because efficiency means at the end also CO2 emission and in general efficiency and cost, but also in terms of a life of the battery and impact on that. Um, complementing this different option becomes useful in the case of not public transportation but private transportation for instance the see fast charging perfect for highway may be not so useful in town i can realize that for my general usage i really do not use it if i have a comprehensive ecosystem designed to support me clearly if i do the the dream land and the dream place with all the charging spots that I like, interoperable and so on, it works. If I am a scenario without a garage, without a charging place at the work, at the, at the work uh, office, uh, the story can become totally different. So one story is what is today, one other is which is the final scenario, and how can I move it realistically with the timing, the cost, and the investment, and so on. In this scenario, an interesting element already mentioned in the previous presentation is the vehicle to grid. What means I can really imagine my car as an active element of the grid. Why? Because this link to charge the vehicle can, I don't want to say easily, but technically possibly with technology that are not rocket science, become bidirectional and pretty, pretty first car going on the market with this capability are coming. I feel with the publication of the famous standard ISO 15, 11, 8 slash 20, it will become a real also in a few months uh, for a lot of car makers, for instance, in Europe. Even this capability opened the door for cars in particular that are long term, for long time parked, the door to use when convenient, the energy or the power of the battery also to support the grid locally is called vehicle to home, for instance, to interact with the solar roof, but also globally behind the meter, beside, uh, meaning on the grid. Imagining obviously the complexity shown by ARM of the, uh, let me say, complementing action of the player behind the plug, the, the so-called charging point operator, mobility service provider, e roaming platform company manager, because there's a ecosystem of complex ecosystem of companies behind that. And this, as I said, opened the door to help with the vehicle in a combined way to support the peak of the grid. To imagine this uh, dreamland, we need to be efficient and battery, also the one on car can help it like it is, but it is another chapter not for today, the option to use the so-called exhausted car batteries, that means having lost typically 20% of the initial capacity for second life application of a vehicle. Few slides to the end, someone already mentioned the, the charging motion for big vehicles, a typical option is at the end to take experience by train, tramway, trolleybus and so on. Here you see the experience with the pantograph on the vehicle side, as you have seen, you can also have the opposite. This is continuous, you have seen at the end, uh, in the short term at least, uh, it's more convenient to go to, uh, for when possible for buses, for instance, to have the uh, high voltage connection only at the stop. But there is also, already mentioned also in the last presentation by Arno, the idea to go towards wireless. Wireless can be another option. Here you see wireless uh, in the uh, dynamic way, so in motion. Here you see some example of a real project in which the technical feasibility has been already, already reached. Uh, for instance, you can imagine to have an highway with a, a line devoted for that in which the vehicle, for instance, with future uh, side level of automated driving can run at constant speed of, for instance, 60 km per hour, recharge the battery and then go back in the main route and run for another part and then go back again. Clearly, uh, is something to be uh, developed. For instance, there will be is in progress the, the activity in Italy, a project on the so-called Brebemi Highway that is close to Milan to test uh, in more than one kilometer real scenario this uh, technology involving an Israeli company called Electra. 
Uh, another option is the swap. The swapping, I feel, is a winning solution for a very small vehicle, as already mentioned by other presenters. Uh, for instance, in India, for small vehicle is already in really place. I know that uh, motorbike, e-motorbike maker, Japanese, European, are working together to standardize that. For cars, it's been a dream in the past already experience, uh, and with no success. Uh, the better place experience is an example. Now, again, there are new companies like Ample that are pushing the technology. Clearly, it works well in a very directive uh, environment, like it is China. In China, there is a company called NIO that is doing with the government support everything, batteries, cars, swapping station, and so on. And so in this case, they standardize their solution by themselves. Last but not least, uh, it's not a matter of this presentation, but to keep open your, your eyes and mind, uh, another technology on the edge is hydrogen. I don't see hydrogen like a, let me say, competitor of electricity. A hydrogen vehicle like this one is also a buffer a unit of battery on board, for instance. So it, they are complementary, not one against the other. In this case, you move the story to the charging time of a liquid or a gaseous fuel, depending on the temperature and pressure. And it is more close to the technology we are living, but with the same environmental effect. Probably in this, let me say, environment, picture, scenario, ecosystem, take care where useful and convenient. Also, this option can be a complementary good solution, depending on the case, to reach the goal of a sustainable, uh, at all the level, uh, environment cost and usage of this green technology that at the end everybody was needing. Said this, I thank you for the attention.